Hi, this is Dr. Rita Marie Loscalzo, and I'm back again with some more amazing information on how you can be vibrantly healthy. And I have been hearing a lot lately, and people ask me all the time about vitamin D. You know, what, what's vitamin D? How much vitamin D should I be taking? You know, you hear these reports that, you know, take 400 IUs of vitamin D a day and you're fine. And other people are saying, no, you need to take a lot more. And I want to just talk to you about the importance of vitamin D and the importance of testing for vitamin D. Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. It's really important for the integrity of your bones, your digestive tract, all the membranes, the barriers, like the blood brain barrier, the barrier in your intestinal tract, the barrier in your bladder, and keeping those really healthy so that they transport what they're supposed to transport and keep out what they're supposed to keep out. I see a lot of people with um, vitamin D deficiencies that have autoimmune disease. So it's really important for that inflammatory process that goes on with autoimmune disease. And well, where do we get vitamin D? Well, the, the, the best place to get it, the way we're supposed to be intended by nature, is through sunlight. And the sunlight hits our skin, it causes a, a biochemical conversion, and voila, we make vitamin D out of sunlight. Beautiful, beautiful as nature intended. Unfortunately, I don't know about you, but most of us are indoors too much to be able to get enough sunlight to make vitamin D. Most people work indoors in office buildings. They may go out at lunchtime to get to the car, so they drive to get lunch and then they come back, and that's not enough to get vitamin D. You'll read a lot of different com conflicting information. Oh, you only need to be out in the sun 20 minutes any time of day, um, only your arms showing you get enough vitamin D. And I wish I could say that that's true, but that's not been my experience. And the research that I've done recently indicates that you need a lot more sunlight than that. You need a good, if, you're, if it's 20 minutes, it needs to be more of a full body exposure, you know, in shorts and a tank top or shorts and a t-shirt. And you also need to be out in the midday sun. The, the interesting thing about it is if you live north of Atlanta, Georgia, then you're not going to get enough vitamin D throughout the winter because the way the angle of the sun is going, you don't get enough direct light direct UV into your skin to be able to make it. So you need to have enough stored in order to be able to make it through the winter if you live above Atlanta, Georgia. And that's a lot of you, right? New York, New Jersey, uh, Canada, and I don't know where, where that latitude lies according to Europe, but that same latitude. So you can get some, <clears throat> but you're just not going to get enough. So what I recommend that you do is test your vitamin D levels. Get your vitamin D levels tested. Don't guess. I see a lot of people who will say, well, I'm just going to take it. It's safe to take 400, 1,000, 4,000 even. I use a vitamin D a day. Yes, it's safe. And the studies I've seen is it's safe to take a lot more than that. They've done long-term studies, six months long, giving people 8,000 I use, no side effects. However, right, those people might have been deficient. You may not be deficient. So if you were to take 8,000 I use, you may find that you do get an, overdo an overload. The other thing that's really important, it's not just overload that we're worried about, it's underload, right? So if you have conditions that could benefit from vitamin D and you're taking like a little trickle of it every day, thinking that you're safe and thinking that your vitamin D levels are good, you're not gonna be, at, you're not gonna be getting what you need. So what you need to do is test your vitamin D levels. If they're good and you haven't been taking vitamin D, more power to you, just stay out in that sun. If they're low and you've been out in the sun, it could be a number of things. Make sure you're not wearing sunscreen, make sure more of your body's exposed, and also make sure you don't shower too soon after coming out of the sun, and don't use soap, because when you do that, you can wash off some of the oils that have been produced in your skin that are then gonna be reabsorbed, so you get enough vitamin D, right? Um, what form of vitamin D should you take? Well, D2 is talked about, that's more of a, a plant source of vitamin D. Uh, D3 is talked about, that's more of like an animal source that comes from liver. The only sources really, the only natural sources are from animal livers because that's where we store our vitamin D, right? You don't really have vitamin D stored in the rest of your body, so it's not like you can get it and it in, in um, eating meat or eating a burger. You have to actually eat more than that. You have to eat the liver. You have to eat cod liver oil or fish that has some of that in it. Um, but the other thing is that the pl some plants are good sources of vitamin D, but they're D2. One of the things that's a good source, this is something that came on recently, is uh, mushrooms. Mushrooms that have been exposed to sunlight can actually make vitamin D. 
and you can actually get vitamin D from that. Again, it's vitamin D2, and if you have a severe deficiency, it's not necessarily going to correct it, but it's a great way to maintain your vitamin D levels. So why do we want to be concerned about vitamin D? Well, vitamin D is important for all those functions I talked about, but also they found that vitamin D deficiency can cause cancer. And I think it's kind of ironic that we go around putting, slathering ourselves with sunscreen to protect ourselves from the dangers of the sun so we don't get skin cancer. Well, the kind of skin cancer that's caused by excessive exposure to the sun is basal cell carcinoma. And it's a fairly benign and treatable as cancers go. Um, as far as the kinds of cancers that you can get from deficiency of vitamin D, the main ones are colon cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer. You know, I mean, given the choice, I'd rather have a basal cell carcinoma and risk, risk that um, and, and not get those kinds of cancers, but you don't need to do either. Um, you can be out in the sun, you can be out there in, in amounts that are good without burning, so as soon as you burn, that's when you run the risks of cancer, and you can also supplement if need be. And if people, if you, if you live in Toronto, you can lay naked on your roof all winter long and you're not going to get enough vitamin D. So unless you were laying naked in, on your roof all summer long and have enough stored, and there's controversy about how much you can actually store, you're better off testing and then supplementing. So that's my spiel on vitamin D. I'm really passionate about it. Number one, I see lots of vitamin D deficiency. I've tested thousands of people. I see more vitamin D deficiency than not vitamin D deficiency. And I see it correct itself with the right doses. And I teach people how to know what the right doses are. It's a little bit, you know, too complicated to do on a short video, but maybe I'll do a second video and teach you how to actually determine, once you get your vitamin D levels back, how much you need to be supplementing. Okay, so enjoy, go get some sun if you can, and if not, go get your vitamin D tested.